they will be very similar. So serial correlation, for example, let's assume VIT, VIT is a serially correlated. In, in particular, actually, we assume VIT follow, follow such a form we call the AR1 process. Still remember, AR1 process means, AR means uh, auto-regressive, auto-regressive because, see, first of all, both sides, their V and a V, looks like V is a function of itself, right? That's why auto means, auto means itself. And uh, R stands for regressive because it looks like a regression V on its lector, right? <laughs> and uh, AR1, one means the right hand side, we only have the first leg. In other words, left hand side is VIT. Right hand side, the first leg means T minus one. And for example, uh, this year is a function of a last year only. For example, 1992 is only affected by 1991. 1991 is only affected by 19, you know, <laughs> 90, so on so forth, right? So only last year affect this year. So that's the idea, AR1 process. Of course, uh, uh, you know, uh, there's also other models such as, say, AR2 process, right? AR2 means right-hand side, besides T minus one, we also have T minus two. For example, say, last year, and the year before last year, a fact this year is something like, say, 1990 and 1991. They two together are gonna affect 1992, right? So on the first. But, uh, you know, you know, uh, to make this simple, we only focus on the AR1 process. Once you understand the idea, AR1 process, actually, you know, other processes will, will be very, very similar. So AR2, AR3, AR3, you know, so will be very similar. So that's why we only focus on AR1 process. So first of all, as we discussed, our V is serially correlated, which follow an AR1 process, let's say. And so value rho right here, and determines how much last year affect this year. For example, rho usually is a number between negative one and a positive one. Let's say, say for example, rho is a positive 0 0.8. In, in that sense, for example, last year multiplied by 0 0.8 goes to this year, right? So if a rho is negative, say negative 0 0.2, then you know last year multiplied by negative 0 0.2 goes to this year. So uh, last semester, we introduced an uh, intuition of this uh, serial correlation. Could it be positive? Could it be negative? Let's say, um, for example, uh, if you did something correctly, for, so let's say, mail field text form. And if you did something great last year, you try to remember and try to repeat this year, right? So and that's a positive correlation, try to say. Negative correlation will be something like, say, if last year is high, this year probably will be low, high, low, high, low. For example, say each week, suppose you do grocery shopping and so you go to a local store, try to buy foods, right? As for example, if, uh, if last week you bought a lot of foods, then probably this week you have still have a lot of leftover, right? So that this week, probably you're going to buy only a little bit, right? So if you only buy a little bit this week, maybe at the end of next week, your refrigerator will be pretty empty so that you, you're going to buy a lot more, right? So that's why, you know, the negative correlation will be high, low, high, low, such a, you know, situation. So, so that's basically the idea, uh, autocorrelation over time. Could it be positive affected? Could it be negative affected? But anyway, that's the idea. So. Anyway, so far, go back to our model. We have mu i, we have vit, so the only difference in this chapter will be v is correlated over time. Beforewards, basically, we assume rho is zero. Beforewards, assume rho is zero, so that vit just equals to epsilon it. Epsilon usually refers to a random noise. IID random noise as a, uh, you know, talk about epsilon IT this year, next year, so so on and so forth. So, you know, nothing affect, uh, they don't affect each other. So before words, we assume the value of rho is a zero, but uh, this chapter, we're going to discuss what if rho is non-zero. Last year really affect this year. So the as usual, I want to try to show you how to think about these questions. 
how to figure out the solutions on the first. So whenever you see a new model, the first question you should ask yourself is, uh, in this, you know, the model is more complicated, but how about we still use our old solution? Let's say, how about we ignore zero correlation? We still use the fixed effect estimator, random effect estimator we, we learned in chapter two, right? So let's say fixed effect. So for example, if I ignore the zero correlation in V, and I'm going to use just use a fixed effect estimator we learned in chapter two, which is, for example, I'm going to cancel out mu i by using the so-called within transformation, right? So, you know, for example, y minus uh, the y i bar, right? x, or similarly, also x i t also minus x i bar, right? So we got so-called y tilde x tilde, so that around the regression, y tilde over x tilde, because because a tilde transformation is going to cancel out mu i anyway, right? So that we, once after our within transformation, our within estimator, and so since we cancel out mu i, so that, uh, uh, you know, no matter mu i is nice or not nice, we don't care since it's canceled out, so that our, our fixed effect estimator is correct, right? So think about, now the, the model is more complicated in the sense our v, is thoroughly correlated, right? So the question in your mind is, if we still use our the old fixed effect estimator, the fixed effect estimator in this case, when rho is non-zero, is that correct or not? Correct in the sense, you know, is this still consistent? Is this still efficient, right? So what do you guys think? Uh, yeah, that's exactly the answer. Let's see why. Let's see why. The right answer, you, you guys are right. Over, for example, the fixed effect estimator, or you can call it a within estimator. Yes, it is correct. Correct in the sense it, it is consistent. Why is consistent? Now, if V is autorally correlated, right? After we do the transformation, the regression model, let me... You know, if I, um, you know, we don't have to go back to chapter two. <laughs> you know, if you look at the, the, the model, y tilde is a function of x tilde, but you know, something plus v tilde, right? In that model, in that model, and so what's the problem happens to v tilde? v tilde, you know, v tilde is not correlated with x tilde. You know, in other words, our assumption four, we don't have any problem with assumption four. Right, so that you know, our beta had supposed to be correct. What's the problem about v tilde? We have serially correlation, right? And so after after the tilde transformation, the you know the the autocorrelation is still there in in the v tilde, right? So what's the autocorrelation? The, what's the problem caused by autocorrelation? Basically, it's our assumption three, right? And so Talk about that tilde transformation equation. Y tilde is a function x tilde plus v tilde, right? And talk about the error term v tilde. V tilde going to violate, for example, assumption three, because v tilde will be also, uh, over time, you know, autocorrelated, right? So in other words, in other words, talk about the tilde transformation, the within transformation. If you calculate the beta hat from the within transformation, it is correct because, you know, uh, assumption four not violated, only assumption three or maybe assumption two violated, right? And so that only affects the standard error, but not the beta hat, right? So that's basically the way to think about by yourself. Actually, let me let me show you the 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 equation I'm talking about. So just just want to make sure, just want to make sure you guys know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the within transformation right here. This is our within transformation we learned before. Talk about uh, when we cancel out mu i, we use a so-called within transformation, right? Y i t minus y i bar, so that we get y tilde, right? Talk about x. Similarly, we got x tilde, and right hand side we have v tilde left, and so mu i is gone. It has been canceled out, right? So. Then we run the regression x tilde 
y tilde over x tilde, the corresponding beta head, beta head, you know, is it correct or not? So basically it depends on talk about for this equation, which assumption has been violated, right? Which assumption violated? And let's talk about this equation, v tilde. We don't have any assumption for problem. In other words, v tilde and x tilde not correlated. So that we, we should be fine. Our we don't have first moment problem. Our beta hat from this equation should be correct, should be consistent, right? But you know, beta hat from this equation will be inefficient because because assumption two or three might be a violation, especially assumption three, you know, zero correlation will be affected since since originally VIT is over time, you know, zero correlated. After the transformation V tilde, also the zero correlation will be there, right? So that's why that's the way to think about, uh, you know, think about figure out the answer by yourself. So that whenever you have a new model, whenever you have a new model, and so the very first question in your mind will be: If I still use my old solution, then is that okay? If not okay, then you know. If okay, in, you know, good in what sense? Bad in what sense? For example, have we figured out together, right? You also, this model is an exercise. We figured out beta half from fixed effect, for example. It's still okay, still good in the sense. First moment, still correct. So that is con still consistent, right? But second moment may not in, in the sense, uh, you know, because the time correlation, the stand error probably will be too large, right? What's the big deal of... Uh, Inconsistency, too large stand error. What's the big deal about the large stand error? Not efficient. So that uh, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> uh, yep, the test. Right, our beta head is correct, but the, our test conclusion might be wrong, right? Because, for example, if you check out the t ratio, right, t test has its beta head divided by stand error, right? Since your stand error is too large, the t ratio will be too small, right? May not be larger than one point ninety six anymore, so that you know your conclusion of test could be wrong. For example, may not be significant anymore. The computer output doesn't have those stars <laughs> afterwards, right? So, so that's why you know beforeers when, when you know when I told you guys uh, very often, I got students ask me, for example, say, uh, "Professor, you know, Liu, uh, my my fixed effect the regression, everything, all those coefficients looks correct, but not efficient, right?" So at that time, my answer was. Did you check out random effect, right? That's one of the solution. Actually, besides random effect, there's one more resources to, to cause insignificance will be, for example, serially correlation. If we have uh, over time serial correlation, again, you know, <laughs> it's violate our assumption two, assumption three to make our stand error too large, right? So that'll make our our beta head not significant anymore. So <laughs> the reason why we introduced this chapter four is thoroughly correlation could be another resources to to cause your beta head, for example, fix it that beta head not significant anymore. So that when you run into such a situation, then your fixed effect. The coefficient look makes sense, but not significant, right? So besides random effect, you can also check, for example, the correlation over time in the error term, right? So uh, let's go back to chapter five. So talking about the uh, serially correlation, recall last semester, when we learn serially correlation, uh, actually we learned two things. First of all, how do we test? We do we have zero correlation or not, right? And you know, at that time we learned something called the Durbin Wilson test, right? I still remember. Second issue will be if we do have zero correlation, what's the solution? How to correct this zero correlation so that we gain efficiency again? In other words, reduce st standard errors, right? The solution is called GLS. GLS basically is a transformation. And so we got Y star, X star, so that the run regret correspondingly error term we call the U star. 
you start is idea again. Uh, you start every term, you know, after the transformation yeah, doesn't have autocorrelation anymore, right? So that right here, this chapter, we're going to exactly the same. We're going to learn these two things. You know, what's the solution? And it's a solution, basically, GLS, fixed effect. Based on fixed effect, we also do a GLS transformation to remove the autocorrelation, right? That's the solution. And before I show detail, probably you guys can already figure out, the, roughly speaking, the, the idea of the transfer, you know, the estimator, the solution by yourself. You know, you should be able to have a rough idea in your mind. That's roughly the, the solution. And uh, also the second half of this chapter will be test. How do we test? Do we really have autocorrelation or not? Right? And so that's, that's the things I'm going to show you. Let's do it one by one. Uh, let's do solutions first, actually. I say, if you, if you really have a serial correlation, then how do we do the transformation to remove autocorrelation in your error term? Last semester, you know, recall our knowledge last semester, talk about GLS transformation. How do we, how do we convert our error term into something called U into U star? And so suppose your error term at that time we call it uh, UT, right? UT AR1 process, right? And still remember what's the transformation to convert U into U star? At the average and subtractor from the original? And not that's the transformation. Oh, that's sorry. the transformation. Talk about average, so on and so forth. So that's the transformation, for example, cancel out the mean y, so on and so forth. I'm trying to say is that last semester, when we have autocorrelation in the error term, what kind of transformation, you know, <laughs> for us to transform, transform UT into UT star? <laughs> so that hopefully after the transformation, U star is ID uh, again, yeah. U star doesn't have autocorrelation anymore. Still remember? <laughs> I directly tell you the answer. And once uh, probably when you see the answer, you, you know, you, oh, <laughs> that's it. Very, very simple. Very, very simple. The solution is called Cochrane Orcut transformation. What's the co Cochrane Orcut transformation? In short, CO transformation. Very simple. Just move this term to the left-hand side. Just move this term to the left-hand side so that VIT minus rho, VIT T minus one, so that equals to epsilon UT, right? Epsilon basically is our, no matter you call it U star or, or V star. And it's basically, we want to do, you know, this year minus rho times last year. So that that's exactly the transformation. So that we we transform our you know autocorrelated error term into into a ID error term. For example, let me show you. So what's our VIT star? Very simple, right here. Our VIT star is VIT minus rho times VIT minus one. Last semester, when at that time, of course, we don't have I index. We only have T index, right? At that time, we called it UT and the UT minus one, right? The transformation last semester we learned will be U star is UT minus rho U T minus one, right? That's exactly the transformation, you know, we learned the last semester when we have such an autocorrelation case. And this simple transformation is called Cochrane Orcut transformation. So in short, you can call it CO transformation. CO transformation to make it to make it short. And so you can just call it CO transformation. We call it a transformation, but it's really, really simple. So again, talk about a Y. Our Y star is YIT minus rho YIT minus one. Similarly, X star is XIT minus rho times its last year, right? So that that's why similarly correspondingly our error term VIT star is VIT minus rho times last year of a VIT, which is V T minus one, right? And by doing this kind of transformation so that we transform, you know, V into V star, 
we why we start is ID because because if you take a closer look, if you take a closer look, VIT minus rho, VIT minus one. Why it, it equals to epsilon it from equation number two? You can see just move, just move rho v t minus one to the left hand side, right? So so v i t minus this term simply equals to epsilon i t. That's why where does this equation comes from, right? So epsilon i t we assume it's it's a random noise. It's i d, right? That's why we got such a transformation. Basically, talk about y, talk about x. We always use a la you know, this year minus rho times last year. For example, suppose rho is say 0 0.8, then 0 0.8 times last year. We use so this year minus, you know, 0 0.8 times last year to get the so-called y, y star. Similarly, we get x star so that, and then we run regression, right? So beforeers, after this co-occurring orca transformation, we can already remove autocorrelation in the error term, right? So now, since we have panel data, the mu i term after the transformation, as you can verify, it will be mu i minus rho times mu i, right? You can verify this is the transformation. So you know after the transformation, y star is this. X star is this. So that similarly, mu star is basically mu i minus rho times mu i. So in, in short, one minus rho times mu i, right? So the point is after this co CO transformation, although V star is ID, but we still have a mu i term. And the only difference is uh, we call it a mu i star now. It's a constant times original mu i, right? So we we solve the problem in the autocorrelation problem in the in v, but we still have the problem talking about our mu, right? So what shall we do? Very simple. Talk about our equation number four. Equation four, from equation three to equation four, we already solved autocorrelation problem in v, right? So talk about equation four. We're gonna do one more transformation to cancel out mu i star. Right? What's the what what kind of transformation to cancel out mu i star? We can simply use the transformation we learned before. For example, V then transformation. Right? So basically, right here, we just do two transformations one by one. The first of all, do a transformation, CO transformation to remove the autocorrelation, remove the autocorrelation uh, in your error term so that we got the equation four. So we removed autocorrelation in V, right? Since we still have the mu i, so that do one more transformation to remove a mu i star. What kind of transformation? For example, within transformation, right? Just uh, do those uh, two transformations one by one so that we, we solve for both problems, right? So that's the so-called, uh, for example, in short, we call it FEAR estimator. FE, of course, stands for fixed effect, right? AR means we take care of the autocorrelation in, in, in VIT, right? So if you do these two transformations and, and you know, the corresponding estimators, you know, beta hat, we, we call in short, we can call it FEAR. It's a fixed effect version of autocorrelate F, right? Compared to the original, compared to the original fixed effect estimator. Now we do, we did one more transformation in advance, which is a CO transformation, right? To remove autocorrelation, right? So, you know, compare original fixed effect estimator and this FEAR estimator. Our FEAR estimator is supposed to be more efficient than the original fixed effect, right? Because we further take care of the autocorrelation, right? <laughs> and so that's why, you know, that's why how do we get to those results? Very simple, very simple. And so, since we are talking about second moment problem, then simply solve the second moment problem, right? By doing some, some sort of transformation, transform the error term to be ID again, so that we solve the problem. That's all. So, so that's the so-called FEAR estimator. Similarly, you know, so far, we are talking about the fixed effect version, right? We, we use a fixed effect or within transformation to cancel out 
MIUI, right? Similarly, you know, you, you, you can also get to the random effect version. In other words, for example, suppose, suppose MIUI is really nice. You don't have to cancel it out. Before words, we, we do a random effect estimator, right? And so do a transformation. Right here, same thing. Once you have equation number four, once you have equation number four, after your CO transformation, you got equation number four, right? If mu i happens to be nice, if you assume mu i to be nice, then you don't have to cancel it out, right? But, you know, at this stage, at this stage, you know, simply do a random effect estimator to this equation number four, right? So we got, similarly, we got random effect version of AR estimator. So they called RE AR estimator. So you got FEAR and uh, REAR estimator. Let me repeat. So we got FEAR and REAR. Hence AR again, of course, talking about the autocorrelation, right? FE or RE basically talk about what we learned before, fixed effect version, random effect version. Their difference will be, first of all, solve the removes autocorrelation in your in your error term v right so that we got v star so that we got equation number four talk about the equation number four depends on how do you deal with mu mu i star we have the fixed effect version we have the random effect version right so that's why you know basically that's exactly the same when we learned in chapter two right so that we, we uh, so that we don't have to show the procedures uh, line by line Basically, it will be exactly the 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 procedures uh, we 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 did in chapter two, right? So that correspondingly, correspondingly, the estimator you called F E A R R E A R. The only difference is that before you do fixed effect, random effect, we did the uh, A R a C O transformation to remove all the correlation. That's the difference, right? So. Uh, because FEAR, REAR, these estimators, we take care of autocorrelation. So theoretically speaking, FEAR should be more efficient than fixed effect estimator. Similarly, REAR estimator should be more efficient than the original random effect estimator, right? Because original fixed effect random effect estimator they ignore the autocorrelation, right? But now FEAR, REAR, now we take care of the autocorrelation. So starting from equation number four, we should be more efficient because now we take care of the autocorrelation, right? So that's, that's this, this theory. And so that's why I told you, if you have a solid understanding of uh, chapter two, Right, fix effect, random effect, Hausman test. Now everything afterwards, you're gonna feel walk, like walking downhill because everything's so similar to what we learned before, right? So now this stuff basically just uh, do a transformation, CO transformation at once. Then af afterwards, everything basically is the same, right? So <laughs> and so, uh, one more detail. If you want to compare FEAR and REAR, if you want to compare FEAR and REAR, as similarly, you can do the Hausman test because the difference between FEAR and REAR is the way you, you deal with mu i star, right? So talking about mu i star, again, depends on your assumption. Do you assume mu i star is nice or not nice, right? Actually, by the way, since... Since mu i star is simply a constant term, one minus rho times original mu i, right? So basically, again, you know, it's talk about we assume original mu i is nice or not nice because the mu i star is a, a constant number, one minus rho times original mu, right? So it will be exactly the same as before. Depends on you assume mu i, original mu i, nice or not nice, right? If mu i is, is really nice, then you can do the random effect word. You can do REAR, right? If you, you know, if mu i is not nice, then you, right, you can only do the fixed effect version, FEAR, right? Only FEAR is, is correct, right? So that you can compare FEAR versus, you know, REAR, compare the two by using a Hausman test. What's a, you know, 
what's the H no H one the p value Hausmann value conclusion everything will be very very similar to what we learned uh, in previously in chapter four right Hausmann test so that for example the H now will be basically the this guy mu i is correlated with x or not right so that we 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 perform basically perform the different we, at that time we call the q q is a difference between you know the uh, between two beta hats the f e a r and r e a r you know the, those two beta hats right once we calculate q as Hausmann proved that Hausmann value is q prime times a uh, inverse of variance q times a uh, q right so the Hausmann value going to follow a chi square distribution with a degree freedom of a k k is number of your beta right so that so that we directly check out the p value if p value is uh, less than 0.05 we reject the null otherwise if you get a large p value larger than 0.05 we fail to reject the null right so that in each case in each case, do we prefer FER or REAR? You know, the story exactly the same as before, right? So see, that's why, you know, once you have a solid foundation in chapter two, chapter chapter four, right? Chapter, you know, the Hausmann test, fixed effect, random effect, Hausmann test, everything afterwards, well, you're going to feel really, really simple. And so everything will be like, this. in this course, no matter what kind of model, what kind of estimator, we always have, Fixed effect version, random effect version. Uh, and so later on, for example, talk about, uh, say, uh, loaded probit, for example, or something like that. No matter what kind of model, we always have fixed effect version, random effect version, so on and so forth. Depends on how you deal with MIUI, right? So that's basically the, the roadmap. So let me show you some uh, applications. Let's revisit the application we did before by using the Grunfeld uh, data set. It's a model investment is a, is a, you know, depends, uh, is a function of a, a market value and a capital stock, a capital. And so, uh, actually, let me use a state uh, to show you the result. Chapter five, right here. Uh, And so I load the data set and uh, I let computer know what's my I and what's my T, right? And this company is I, year is T. Uh, my, my data set is uh, strongly balanced. Uh, basically, again, means a uh, no missing value. Beforewords, beforewords, uh, let me open my previous codes. Chapter four. In chapter four, the computer codes, they are X, T, reg, Y x1, x2, comma, fe, right? And so this is my fixed effect regression. Make it big. This is my fixed effect regression. I save the result into something called fe, right? Similarly, I did a random effect estimator, xt reg, y, x1, x2, comma, re, and I save it into something called re, and then use a Hausmann test, Hausmann command to compare the two, got my you know, how's my value, p-value, make my conclusion, right? So that's what I had before. At that time, I ignore the value row. Now, let's see chapter 5. Chapter 5, really, really similar. See, let's take a closer look at this command. How do, did I do F-E-A-R estimator? This command looks almost the same as before, right? Beforewards, the command is X-T-R-E-G. Now it's X T R E G A R. <laughs> and so, of course, X T means banner data we learned before. R E G means regression, right? Now we have a A R. A R, of course, means autocorrelation, right? So X T R E G A R means I'm going to do a panel data regression, but also take care of the autocorrelation, right? A R, right? By default, it's, it's A R1, right? So let me show you the result. For example, see, there's a X T R E G A R Y X one X two comma F E, and so I'm gonna do a fixed effect version of you know the autocorrelate. So that's why we have fixed effect version, or you can call it within version. With A R one 
uh, disturbance or AR1 error return, right? So that's my AFE AR estimator, right? So that's my beta heads, that's my standard errors, so on and so forth. And I saved it, in, I call it something called FEAR, right? Similarly, let's do a random effect version. Let's do a REAR. So the command's really, really similar. XT, REG, AR, right? XT, REG, AR, comma, RE, comma, RE. I'm going to do a random effect version. So my computer says, this is RE, random effect version, AR1, right? So that I got RE, AR estimator, right? So I got those beta heads, those are standard errors, so on and so forth. I saved into something called REAR. Now, just like before, I can use a Hausman test to compare these two FEAR and REAR, right? So, and so Hausman test tells me the, the difference, you know, and also standard errors, so on and so forth. Now the Hausman value is a seven point uh, seven one, seven point seven one, right? And uh, we can, let's directly jump to the p value. P value is a zero point zero two, zero point zero two. Now this is a smaller than zero point zero five, right? Smaller than zero point zero five. If we get a smaller than zero point zero five, our conclusion should be we very good. We reject now. What's our h now? That they're the same. Right, right. And so there are more than one way for it to put it, right? So the textbook put it something like an expectation the, of a mu i condition on xit is a zero, right? Or you can understand something like mu i and xit have correlation, right? And they have zero correlation, right? That's our h now. Or you can understand something like the fe and the re in, in our case. FEAR and REAR, their betas are the same, right? Or their difference is zero, right? And so, you know, no matter which way you want to, you know, you want to put it, basically the, the same, right? So there are more than one way to, the textbook, you know, strictly speaking, strictly speaking, formally, the formal way to put it should be the conditional expectation. And meanwhile, conditional XIT, the conditional expectation is a zero. But of, of course, you know, for us, you know, the words might be easier to, to understand, right? So, you know, uh, talk about our homework, our exam. If you want, you can you can simply put, say, fixed effect, beta, beta hat fixed effect equals to beta hat random effect. There might be easier to put it that way, right? Or you can put mu i and x i t have zero correlation. You know, either use a, either use a, you know, type the, the formula or simply use a, use a words to describe and they to have zero correlation, right? And so, you know, and so now we reject the null. We reject the null. H null is they two are the same, right? So we reject the null means no, they're different, right? <laughs> if they're different, then which one do we prefer? Fix it better version, right? In this case, we should we should only use F E A R estimator, right? The R E A R estimator, you know, no, it's it's wrong. Basically, it's not consistent, right? So that's the idea, you know. That's why we need to stick with a F E A R estimator, and F E A R is supposed to be better than original F E. So if you recall what we learned in chapter uh, four, when we ignore. In chapter four, let me let me download the file of chapter four to show you. In chapter four, at that time, when we ignored the uh, right here, at that time, when we ignore this uh, autocorrelation. At that time, the Hausman test gave us Hausman value 2.33, and the p-value is a 0.31, right? At that time, 
which that number is larger than 0 0.05. So that we fail to reject now, it means uh, at that time, our conclusion was, okay, mu i not correlated to xit, their correlation zero. The, you know, mu i basically is nice, right? But actually, when we take care of the autocorrelation, actually, we got a new conclusion. Beforewards, that conclusion actually may not be correct, right? See, in this chapter, in this chapter, when we take care of the autocorrelation, see, the Hausmann value, when we take care of the autocorrelation, you know, the Hausmann value actually is less than 0 0.05. Now, based on the, the, these results, when we, you know, when we take into, take, you know, take a, take the autocorrelation into account, actually, we find out that actually mu actually really correlated with XIT. Right. So <laughs> we find something new, <laughs> different from before. Before we so ignore autocorrelate, but now question. So if um, that probability is statistically significant, then does that mean FE is always better than RE? Uh, which two? FE? Uh... Yeah. EAR and uh, REAR. It's statistically significant, and it is. Does that mean FDK are always better? Um, between they two, between they two, uh, the discussion will be very, very similar to the discussion we had before. For example, say, if they two, roughly speaking, almost the same as each other, let's say if they almost the same as each other, so that we fail to reject now, right? So in that case, if they almost the same as each other, then it means both of them are correct. Right, so that if both of them are correct, you can use you can use uh, either both of you can use either one. But we further prefer the random effect version because that's even more efficient. The stand error is even smaller, right? So if the opposite, if you reject the null, if you reject null, it means uh, the two basically different. The difference is kind of large, right? So if you conclude that the two are kind of different, then it must be the case that one of them is right, the other one is wrong, right? Then which one is right, which one is wrong? It's always a case that fixed effect version correct. In other words, again, fixed effect is always correct because fixed effect version requires less assumption. Less assumption means, you know, we are safe. We are always correct, right? Random effect because a C requires one more assumption so that may not be true, right? So that in this case, you find they two different. It must be the case. Fixed effect version, correct. Random effect is wrong. So only, you know, FEAR is consistent. REAR is not consistent if you find they two different, right? So basically discussion is really, really similar to what we had before between original FE and RE estimators. And so that's the uh, autocorrelation The state of cause and autocorrelation, you know, also together with the Hausmann test. Basically, everything's so similar to what we had before, right? So that's why once you have a solid foundation chapter, chapter before, this is really, really simple. <laughs> you know, we can finish discussion, you know, maybe in, if we like 10 minutes, <laughs> we, we finish the discussion, right? But let me show you something different, something new. Uh, let's take a closer look at this FEAR estimator. Let's take a closer look. Um, let's say besides, besides fixed effect estimator and also FEAR estimator, besides the two, there's one more transformation to cancel out mu i. I mentioned before, but didn't formally present to you, which is a first difference estimator. And so far, these three estimators, especially the first two, first difference, fixed effect, both of them, you know, they cancel out mu i, right? So that they are kind of similar in the sense that, you know, both of them, no matter you use a first difference transformation or fixed effect transformation, we can always cancel out mu i so that we, you know, we, we are correct. So very often I get a question, which is, uh, you know, between, for example, first difference and a fixed effect, which one do I prefer, 
right? And which one is better in, in with, with so on and so on first? And so let me let now let me present the first difference estimator and then give you the discussion. You know, uh, especially between first difference and fixed effect, how do we select between the two? And first of all, let's present what's the first difference estimator. First difference estimator is um, we got we do a transformation delta capital delta is this year minus last year. For example, talk about our Y. For example, our Y is uh, say investment. Basically, this year the investment this year minus the investment last year. Their difference will be we call it delta Y, right? The, or you can call it a change in Y, right? The reason why we use a capital delta, this is a Greek character, delta. The little delta is something like that, right? So the reason why we use a delta to stand for change is because delta sounds like difference. So <laughs> delta difference. So they're kind of similar. That's why we use deltas to stand for difference, difference, or you can call it change, same thing. So... If you do the diff first difference transformation, then the left-hand side, original y becomes a delta y. x becomes delta x. Similarly, v becomes a delta v. What happens to our mu i? Mu i has been canceled out. Mu i has been canceled out. For example, let me show you. This equation 6 comes from the difference equation 1 minus equation 3. Let me show you equation 1, equation 3. Equation one is this original equation, original equation, right? Equation three is right here. Basically, we, we change everything into t minus one, change all those t by t minus one, right? For example, for example, suppose t is 1992, then t minus one will be 1991, right? And it's basically replace all those t by t minus one, t minus one, so on so forth, right? So calculate the difference between equation one and equation three. And so left-hand side, we got yit minus yit minus one. So that this year minus last year, right? Right-hand side, alpha and alpha canceled out, right? And the beta xit, beta xit minus one. So the difference will be, you can collect beta terms. So beta times change of xit, change xit, or delta xit will be, you know, the, you know, xit minus xit minus one, right? So shorthand notation. Mu i, mu i, canceled out. And talk about a v. Delta v is vit minus vit minus one, right? So shorthand notation, we call it delta vit, right? That's why, that's why, how do we got our, where's our, First difference, uh, right here. That's how we got our equation number six. The shorthand notation delta will be, you know, this year minus last year, right? So equation number six, if you continue to run a regression, delta y or delta x, you can get beta hat. The beta hat we call it beta hat first difference, you know, the first difference estimator. As that first difference estimator is also correct in the sense we cancel out mu i so that so that we don't need the assumption mu i nice or not nice. We don't care since mu i has been canceled out. In some sense, this first difference estimator is very, very similar to our fixed effect estimator. Fixed effect estimator will be also called within, right? So let me let me show you the within transformation again. See? This is our chapter two. In chapter two, the within transformation, we got a y tilde equals beta times x tilde plus v tilde, right? And if you switch back and forth to compare, they two are really, really similar. The first difference, so this is a delta y, delta x, delta v, right? The, the within transformation, y, you know, the y tilde, x tilde, v tilde, right? So they are so similar to each other. By doing the transfer, the only difference is the, the transformation different. But after no matter first difference transformation or within transformation, mu i is gone, right? Mu i has been canceled out. That's why 
first difference is very, very similar to our fixed effect estimator because both of them, we can cancel out mu i, right? We can cancel out mu i. So that's the first conclusion. They two are very similar in the sense uh, both of them cancel out mu i so that uh, basically the properties will be very similar. For example, you can argue the first difference also robust to mu i, no matter mu i nice or not nice, we don't care since it's gone, right? So we don't need the assumption. So that uh, first difference doesn't need the uh, assumption, you know, the nice mu i assumption. Then the question will be, then between fixed effect and the first difference, then if they are kind of different or slightly different, then how do we select? When do we prefer fixed effect? When do we prefer first difference, right? So between the two, then how do we, you know, discuss a difference between the two? <laughs> yeah. Hence, let me put it this way. To me, I'm going to show you my way to view these two estimators. What's my way? Let's go back to our FEAR. Let's go back to our original you know, FEAR estimator. Let's see. FEAR, if you look at this transformation, the Cochrane Orcas transformation, you know, the Y star. Let's take a closer look at this uh, Y star. Y star, you know, Yi t minus rho times Yi t minus one, right? So let, if you take a closer look, for example, suppose the value of rho is one. If a value of rho happens to be one, then this, this Y star transformation happens to be Yi t minus Yi t minus one, right? It's exactly the first difference transformation, right? So in other words, the first difference transformation is simply a special case of FEAR when rho is one, right? <laughs> when rho is one, FEAR simply reduces to the first difference, right? And uh, what's the other special cases? When value of rho happens to be zero, when value of rho happens to be zero. So the first step, the first step, y star, you know, equals to original y. We, we didn't do anything, right? But the second step, when we do the within transformation, right? So that, so that the after overall, the transformation will be simply exactly the same as the within transformation. Is that clear to you? I mean, recall FEAR transformation, we have two steps, right? The first step is we got Y star, right? And then the second step is the within transformation, right? If your value of rho is zero, then the first step, Y star is Y. Basically, you, you didn't do anything, right? And then you directly jump to the second step, which is a within transformation, right? So the point is, if a rho is zero, then FEAR, uh, right, FEAR, FEAR kind of simply reduces to the original FE, right? <laughs> if rho is zero, then basically there's no autocorrelation. You, you didn't, the CO transformation basically did nothing, right? <laughs> and so, and so your FEAR going to simply reduce, reduce to the original FE. So to me, basically, the way I view FEAR going to be FEAR nests or contains Fe and first difference as two special cases. Depends on the value of rho. Depends on value of rho is zero or value of rho is one, right? If value of is a rho, a rho, rho, rho is a zero, then FEAR is simply reduces to Fe, right? If value of rho is one, then FEAR simply reduces to the first difference, right? So, to me, actually, how do I answer the question? Do I, you know, between first difference and uh, fixed effect, how do I select? My answer will be actually, we don't select between the two. We don't select between the two. What's the best way for us to select? We check out the value of rho. We let the value of rho to help us decide, right? We, we let computers to calculate the value of rho. 
if value of rho happens to be zero, then you don't have to do any you know, autocorrelation transformation. You don't have to do the CO transformation, right? So the fixed effect estimate already perfect, right? If the value of rho happens to be one, right? Then of course, the first difference, the, the transformation will be perfect, right? So we leave the decision to the computer, let computer to, to calculate the value of rho for us. Once we know how large rho is, right? Hence, I can answer the question, you know, shall we do first difference or shall we do fixed effect? Actually, actually, you know, in reality, very often, the value of rho may not be exactly zero, may not be exactly one, right? Hence, maybe something like, say, the value of rho may be something like, say, 0 0.5. Is in <laughs> somewhere in between, you know, fixed effect or first difference, right? So in that case, the very often the answer will be neither neither first difference or nor fixed effect is perfect. The FEAR actually is better than both of, <laughs> of, of them, right? So <laughs> that's basically my answer. And so if you ask me between first difference and fixed effect, you know, we, how do I select between the two? My answer is, uh, first of all, I don't want to select between the two. And I want to calculate the value of rho. Let the value of rho to tell me which one is better? If rho is exactly zero, goes to fixed effect. If rho, uh, you know, rho is exactly one, goes to first difference, right? <laughs> Two special cases. But in general, actually, you know, very often we got somewhere in the middle, something like rho is uh, zero point five. In that case, actually, both fixed effect, you know, and first difference, they both of them not as good as F E A R. F E A R going to be better than they two. Right. So that's my way to view this kind of discussion. Right. So, and so uh, I checked many textbooks, even, even Betty's book doesn't present the two this way. I also checked, uh, for example, those, I list a bunch of panel data books in our syllabus, for example, textbook by Xiao Zheng, so on and so forth. Actually, they didn't present this way. So <laughs> they try to they try to argue how do we how do we compare the two by using sort of tests so on so on so forth. To me, you know, no, simply simply calculate the value of rho. Let the rules help uh, help us make the decision, right? <laughs> that's the idea. So that's why that's why I like FEAR estimator, I let uh, let computer to help us make the decision, right? For example, for example, let's check how the uh, FEAR, our FEAR right here, XTREGAR comma FE, right? The value of rho is right here. Computer says rho hyphen AR. This is our rho hat. This is our rho hat as a uh, uh, autocorrelation. Uh, our rho value of rho come from our uh, AR1 process, is, which is a 0 0.672. If a rho hat is 0 0.672, that's exactly the situation we talk about somewhere between zero and one, right? Basically, neither first difference or fixed effect is perfect. Our FEA are going to be better than they two, right? So, that's the first discussion. Um, by the way, how do we calculate the first difference estimator? Uh, first of all, for some reasons, data guys they don't they don't like first first difference. I don't, you know <laughs> if I were data guys, I gonna I gonna program xt rec together with uh, options something like comma. FD, right? I expect data guys, they, they include the first difference as an option of XTREG, right? But unfortunately, they, they didn't program first difference. So how, then how do we, how do we calculate the first difference estimator if you really want to do that one? Then how do we get this one? I'll show you. We do have solutions. We do have solutions. I'll show you two solutions. The first solution is, uh, uh, Right here, we have a command called xt serial. Serial, of course, stands for serial correlation. 
if you specify comma output, it's gonna show you the 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 first difference estimator. I I I'll, I'll discuss this command xt0 in a second in detail. This command actually not not designed for the first difference estimator, but as a byproduct, it give a, gives us the first difference you know <laughs> result. For example, the result is right here. Right here. This is our beta one. This is our beta two after first after taking difference, right? And so the the market value is our first one, and the tablet stock is our second one, x one, x two, right? So this command, this command xd zero comma output. You have to specify output so that computer gonna print out this the first difference result. This is the first way. Second way is you can do this by using by using reg command or a regular OLS command, but do a transformation to your y to your x. In other words, you have to calculate delta y, delta x, so that you can run the OLS regression delta y on delta x, right? Then how do we calculate delta y, delta x? Stata, the nice part is that Stata has some, some uh, handy commands available, which is uh, this command, d little dot. For example, d dot y gonna give you delta y. d the dot x gonna give you delta x, so on and so forth. So in my case, I put d dot, I put a parenthesis, parenthesis, everything, y, x1, x2, then basically, Computer gonna difference everything inside the parentheses, right? So, so that's another way to do the first difference uh, regression. First difference regression. Right here, you know, I use a command comma noc. Noc short for no constant. No constant. You you don't have to you don't have to include a constant in your regression because see the. In this regression model, the constant term, the intercept alpha has been canceled out, right? That's why, you know, I told computer, you know, no constant. You don't have to put constant out there since a uh, constant is gone, right? And so that's the two ways I, uh, you know, you can try, you can, where is it? You can try both of them. And so our, our homework probably doesn't require to do so. Not required by the homework, but for le learning purposes, especially later on, if your research, if your dissertation needs to to run such a first difference regression, right? You'd better know how to do it. <laughs> Not very hard, <laughs> although data guys, so they they didn't program for us, but I showed you two ways so that we can, you know, do it by ourselves. <laughs> we can get this uh, wrong. Again, the sometimes data guys. Uh, they're nice and not nice. You know, on one hand, they are nice in the sense that they program a lot of nice things available. But at the same time, for some re some some weird reasons, <laughs> Stata guys has their own preference preference. For example, they don't like first difference. And uh, for another detail, such as uh, uh, let's say XT reg command. And so we learned we have two options, comma FE comma re right as do you know if you do not specify anything if you do not specify comma fe comma re if you do not specify anything xt reg by default gonna give you do you know which one fixed effect or random effect which one is the default for xt reg command uh, we expect they do fix effect, right? But unfortunately, <laughs> Stata guys, they, they use the random effect version as default. <laughs> uh, to me, it doesn't make sense, <laughs> right? <laughs> we supposed to use a fix effect as default because that's the safe, that's the always correct estimator, right? But I don't know why Stata guys, they like random effect better. So that's why for me to, to avoid, you know, making mistakes, Personally, I always use comma fe comma re. Always specify which option I want to try. I want to use because some people they thought the default must be fixed effect, but actually no, <laughs> default not fixed effect. <laughs> default is random effect. So that's why, again, personally, I always specify comma. You know those options to avoid making mistakes. You know some some commands in Stata they're weird.
So that's uh, the discussion of uh, uh, estimation so far. Let me show you testing, how do we test. Um, actually test, not a lot. So, so let's skip the break. Let's finish everything so that I, I, I'll let you guys uh, go early today. So testing, not a lot, just, just, a, just a two computer commands, fixed file version, random effect version. We should be done very quick. So let's skip the break and finish everything. Yeah, and then I'll let you go. go. Testing. How do we test for serial correlation? Again, we have two versions, fixed effect version, random effect version. In other words, uh, in a fixed effect model, uh, how do we test the serial correlation row is zero or non-zero? And also talk about the random effect version. If you treat mu i to be nice, then, you know, so how do we test the row is a zero or not a zero, right? So I will show you two versions, but again, in general, Usually, the fixed effect version will be more popular because, as always, fixed effect version is is more robust or more safe, right? So that's why you know I'll show you both. But uh, again, fixed effect version will be will be more popular. Uh, let me use a data to show you this. Testing the commands, I use a uh, chapter five point two. Uh, Let's still use this, uh, the same data set, Brownfield data set. I load the data. Let me, let me clear everything out. And so I load the data set. I set uh, uh, I and T variables. The fixed effect version, the command is XT0. XT0, Y, X1, X2. Let me show you the result. Oops. Now the computer says, see, sorry, I I don't have these uh, commands available. The command says command xt0 is unrecognized. Basically means my status says, sorry, I don't I I don't know what's this command. <laughs> you know, you must be doing something wrong, right? What's wrong? Very simple. As this command xt0, uh, this is data 18. Even state 18, they didn't include this one into state 18. So, but but for us, we can install the, a new command very quickly, very easily. So let me show you how to install a new command. Just like last semester when we learned our studio, right? There are some new commands not available by default, but we can install it very quickly. So let me show you how to install this, this command xt0. I actually type a little bit uh, some information so that you can try, you can check out, do you have uh, this command available or not? For example, if you really, if you already have this command available, if you type help xt0, a help file is supposed to pop up so that you, you can see all those details, instructions, so on and so forth. For example, let's try. If I check out help xt0, I don't have this, uh, I don't have the help, the details of the help file, right? Instead, computer print, prop up some data, something like, uh, for example, uh, FAQ, so on and so forth, for example, especially this guy, XT0, you know, if installed, ST0039, basically some, some links, they related to XT0. Then in our case, what shall we do? And basically, Stata says, sorry, I don't have this available. Our job is uh, let's install it by ourselves. So how do we install the new command? Really, really simple. Just click the link, either the link right here or the link over here, x0, whichever. So for example, suppose I click st0039. A little window pops up, says click here to install. Click here to install this stuff. So OK, I, I, I'll install it from here, right? So I, Click to install. So see, very quickly, installation already complete, already complete. So if we go back, click the window right here. If we go back, right here, we have a simple file up to you. It's optional. This file uh, is optional. You know, uh, either either get this do file or not. No, no big difference. So, you know, again, it's optional. The, only the first one, first one, ADO, this help file, this stuff, these are you, you have to install by yourself. 
the second one, the second link is optional. So on. Now let me try again. If I help XT0, if I run this file, see? Now a detailed help file pop up, right? It is a, it indicates that I've already success, successfully, you know, has the commands already installed on my computer so that I can, I, I'm ready to use the command, right? So it shows all those details on the first. So let me, oops, let me, let me try my command again. When I, when I did it very first time, it told me, XT0 cannot be recognized. I installed it and let me go back to the command. Let me try this command again. Click. Now see my, it works now, right? On my computer, print out something. Woodridge test because uh, this is really, you know, proposed by Jeffrey Woodridge, the, the person who wrote the, the textbook. <laughs> and so, uh, Woodridge test for autocorrelation in panel data. H now is no, no autocorrelation, no first order correlation. In other words, H now is a row is zero, right? So computer gives me F value 2063. I don't know it's large or small, a print probably large, but, but again, I don't know how large is large, right? So that we directly jump into the P value. P value is a 0, 0.0000, basically zero, right? Our P value is less than 0 0.05 as always, right? So that our conclusion should be V correct. V reject the null, right? Our H null is rho is zero, right? V reject the null means rho is non-zero, right? Rho is non-zero. We do have some some numbers and you know non-zero, right? Uh, still remember when we when we run the uh, FEAR estimator, computer actually report the value of rho for us is something like 0 0.67, something like that, right? But now we formally test the value of rho. Is that really significantly different from zero or not, right? So it says, and, and, you know, it is really non-zero. <laughs> this is a formal test. So that's a, that's a, a fixed effect version of a, a zero correlation test. Uh, as I told you, if you... If you specify comma output, if you specify comma output, let's check out. We still got to the, you know, Woodridge test at the bottom, but on top, we got to the first difference results, right? In other words, in other words, Woodridge test is based on first difference regression. Would you, you know, propose a test? First of all, calculate first difference beta hat and calculate the residuals based on residual, do whatever calculation so that eventually calculate that F value, P value, so on so forth, right? So that, so that our first difference is actually a byproduct of Wuji's test. That's why, that's why, you know, by default, Wuji says XT0 command doesn't report First difference by default, but if you want to, if you want to check out the first difference regression, just let computer to print out the output so that to do so simply comma output, right? <laughs> so before this one, it, it doesn't show you those detailed uh, first difference result. It's comma output. So now we have the first difference result. It's, it's, uh, uh, that's the fixed effect version. How about random effect version? Random effect version will be, we're going to use a command called xt test one. This is a number one, xt test one. Similarly, let's check out, do we have this command available or not, right? So let's check out the help file, help xt test one. It seems, uh, again, I don't have this command available, right? So similarly, let's install it very quickly. And so that I click button here, click here to install, click. So I've already have uh, installation complete. So I should be good now. Uh, let me show you the random effect version. Random effect version will be wrong uh, random effect regression and then do XT test one, XT test one. The first regression, as I told you, 
by default, if you do not specify anything, then by default, it will be our random effect estimator. Let me show you. I didn't specify comma re, right? So by default, it is a random effect version. <laughs> In this example, I purposely, I try to show you default is random. I don't like it, but uh, <laughs> uh, I'm not a state programmer, so <laughs> I have no choice. So, you know, that's why, again, personally, I always specify comma fe, comma re to avoid making mistakes. Right here, I purposely showed you, you know, the, the default is random effect. So once you run a random effect estimator, run this command xt test one. So that we got a result like this. Again, immediately right after random effect, do this xt test one. And it print out a bunch of tests. You can see, you know, test two sided about random effect, random effect one sided, zero correlation joint test, what they are, for example. Random effect, we are trying to test the mu i term. We are trying to test the mu i is a zero or non-zero. And so the first two, basically, we are trying to test the variance ui is a zero or non-zero. Basically, do we really have a mu i or not, right? If variance is a zero, basically, there's no such a term, right? And so the, on, uh, either one-sided or two-sided. The first two, they're talking about the mu i term. And then the third one, zero correlation, lambda is a zero. We call it a row, state called lambda, but anyway, same thing. And so this is a talk about, we're trying to test a row is a zero or non-zero. Right here, for the random effect model, our p-value is a 0 0.0013. Again, it's less than 0 0.05, right? So that again, we, we reject an all. Our h now is the row is a zero. We reject now. It means from random effect, we also reject now. We also got a conclusion, you know, the value of, of row is non-zero. We do have autocorrelation, right? Uh, every term VIT really correlated over time, right? And hence, uh, the very last one is a joint test, uh, mu i and uh, lambda t. Uh, 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 not lambda t, uh, row is a zero. Jointly, or, you know, they two together, and the mu i is it really there? The autocorrelation is that really there? So we, we jointly test they two together, or are they oh, <laughs> they're zero at the same time or not? Right. So that's a joint test. So, so if you only care about zero correlation, then the third one will be what we're looking for. So so that's the fixed effect version and random effect version again. Fixed effect version will be more popular in practice because a fixed effect model, people like it better. It's more robust, right? <laughs> Question. No, it just attests uh, the variance of a uh, mu i term is a zero or non zero. Because if mu i is a variance of zero, it means there's no mu i at all. And so we worry too much, everything. UIT simply reduces to VIT, right? There's no mu i. <laughs> That's the, any other. So again, fixed effect version will be more popular for two reasons. The first reason is a fixed effect model. The fixed effect uh, estimator, of course, is robust, right? Second reason is uh, if you have uh, missing values in your data set, or you can call it if you have gaps, Right. For example, say uh, you have 1991, uh, 1993, but you don't, you don't have 1992, right? So in that case, the fixed effect version, in other words, xt zero, that command works. But the second one, xt test one, that command gonna say sorry, I, I cannot take care of the <laughs> the gaps in the data, right? So xt zero is robust to those missing value, missing years. But uh, XD test one cannot handle those missing years. That that's why two reasons. That's why XD zero is more popular, right? So let's summarize this chapter and then let me show you the the computer homework. This chapter we learned the zero correlation and it's basically we're trying to see the value of row zero or non-zero, right? So two things: 
estimation and test, right? Estimation, very simple. We learned FEAR and REAR. They're really, really similar to our what we learned before. FE and RE, right? And by using a Hausman test to compare the two, right? And so the estimation, really, really simple. But talking about FEAR, uh, an interesting point to me is FEAR actually could be viewed as a, a general estimator which contains FE and FD, first difference, as special cases, right? <laughs> that part actually is interesting to me. So that uh, if you question, ask you which one shall we use, the answer is uh, let's check out the value of rho so that we can decide, right? Maybe maybe some variance middle is even better. FEAR is even better, right? So that's the estimation. Testing, very simple. We learned the fixed effect version and random effect version, right? XT0, right? So of course, a fixed effect version is more popular. The, the details, the, you know, how does uh, Jeff Woodridge program calculate his, uh, uh, his uh, XT0 value so forth? We do not require. We don't care about those details. As long as uh, it does a job, we know how, how to do it. And when do we use it? Once we get some result, how to how to interpret the, the result? It's good enough, right? So the advantage, disadvantage of the test already, you know, that's already that's more important to us. How how does he calculate exactly the formula? Calculate the number. Actually, we don't care about those details that much, right? We are most people uh, are applied users. For uh, applied users, we more care about advantage, disadvantage, when do we use this one? When do we use that one, right? So how do we interpret the, 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 the conclusions and the results? That's more more important, right? And so the, the dirty job of uh, derive those formulas, leave it to econometricians like me, like Jeff Rujic, right? Apply users, we just care about the results, right? So let's talk about homework. The second homework, um, um, right here. Second homework, uh, be we have a PDF file. We're gonna use a data set called NLS work, uh, DTA NLS work CSV. Hence, we have two different versions on computer, so that you know you can you can download the data set from here. It probably in the zip file on Canvas also contains uh, the two. But anyway, it's posted here just you know to make sure just to be safe. Homework, the PDF, if you open this PDF, you're going to look like this. And so uh, the homework number two says we're going to use uh, uh, NLS work data set. Uh, this is a uh, NLS stand for National Longitudinal Survey. By the way, longitudinal, longitude, this word just means panel data. <laughs> just means a panel data, just an equivalent way to 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 say panel data. So uh, I don't know why they they you the econometricians you know always like to use some fancy words. So you know try to <laughs> try to scare the outline. You know <laughs> if you're not familiar with these words, so you may wonder what's this. Really simple, just means panel data. So it's a national survey over time, over space, right? So we have a bunch of variables, log wage, L wage is a log wage, uh, over age, age square, and uh, SMSA means a metropolitan area or not, it's a dummy variable. And uh, tenure means uh, 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 his tenureship in the, in, in, his, in the work. So first of all, part A, part B, we're gonna do FEAR and REAR estimators. In other words, run such a regression, but of course, uh, take care of the autocorrelation in the error term, right? So to do part A, part B, it will be uh, actually also part C, Hausman test. A, B, C, these three parts, they should be really, really similar to my sample codes in the first file right here. In my sample codes, I use the ground field data set, specify what's my I, what's my T, right? In your case, similarly, you know, uh, in this data set, I and the T must be, I must be individual, must be something called ID or something. Basically, ID number 
ID number of uh, uh, of the I can open it very quickly to, to take a quick look. Yeah, ID and the year, they are I and the T variables. ID means uh, individual ID, which which worker, right? ID is our I, year is our T. That's that's the I and the T variables. And uh, continue. So, so part A, B, C, they should be very, very similar to my first file. Hence, computer commands will be X, T, R, E, G, A, R, comma, F, E, comma, R, E, right? Save them into F, E, A, R, R, E, R, and compare the two by using a Hausman test so that you can do part A, B, C, very, very similar to my simple codes. And the part, part uh, D, perform a Woodridge test of a zero correlation in fixed fat model. In other words, we're gonna we're gonna use XT0 command to test all the correlation in a fixed fat model, right? So which correspond to my sample codes in the in the second one. So I'm gonna go basically just corresponding to this command. In my sample file, I use a XT0, Y, X1, X2, right? In your case, same thing, XT0, then L wage, log wage, uh, H, H square, basically everything afterwards, right? <laughs> basically, they should be very, very similar, right? So you don't you don't have to print out the the details of the first difference results, as so we only care about the the, the test result. Question? Yeah, good question. So for the XT serial mm -hmm. object, if we don't have that, we should load that then. Right. Right. Most likely, you don't have that available <laughs> on my computer. I, on this computer, it's data eighteen. It doesn't have uh, this command, so most likely you you need to you know install it. Here, <laughs> case, but very simple. You know, simply run run this line, right? Highlight and click run, right? So that the computer gonna you know pop up the link. So the click link install. So very easy. And finally, part, part E, between FERAR estimator and first difference estimator, as a, oh, actually, part D requires you use an output option to show first difference. I was wrong just now. <laughs> you, you do need the output option <laughs> to present the first difference, the data. In other words, uh, in other words, <laughs> in other words, uh, it should correspond to this slide, comma, output. You, you need really show the first difference results. And finally, be, between FEAR and FD, which one do we prefer? Use the value of row hat to decide, right? So as we discuss in, in class, you know, actually, FEAR will be always correct, right? FEAR always use the, the value of a row hat, right? So <laughs> FEAR actually, Actually, I've already told you the answer. F E A are always better than better or the at least the, the same as F E or F D, right? And so, because F E A are always use the best value of row hat. If row hat happens to be happens to be zero, then F E A R happen will be exactly the same as F E, right? If row hat happens to be one. F E R happen it will be exactly the same as first difference, right? But if it will if it is somewhere in the middle, of course F E R will be the, the best choice. It's better than the other two, right? So actually I've already <laughs> told you the answer, but check out the value from uh, F E A R. Check out how large it is, as long as not exactly zero or not exactly one, right? So most of the time F E R should be the best option. Right. So, any any other questions about the homework about anything? Question. If a hospital, if our data, uh, if all the correlation should be used, that if a data is too big, uh, oh. I, I see your question. I see your question. Over the the point of FEAR compared to FE, FEAR is supposed to be more efficient, right? To gain efficiency, right? So 
you're right in the sense that, you know, if we run fixed effect estimator, if we already turns out to be already everything significant, right? So if you just stop right there, I don't mind at all, right? If everything already turns out to be significant, for, for example, so when fixed effect already everything significant, for example, for example, say the value of rho is kind of small. Maybe rho is say only 0.1, 0.2, right? Or if your sample size is very big, already make everything already very significant, right? So anyway, if uh, if you're fixed effect, everything already perfect, I don't mind if you just uh, stop right there. You don't have to, you don't have to further, uh, you know, try this, try that to to try the try this to see, you know, others, right? But if your fixed effect not that perfect, not that is you know efficient. Maybe you have to try other estimators to see if you if you can further gain efficiency, right? That's basically the story. Any other questions? Okay, please. Oh yeah, so so um, when are, your office hours are usually during the daytime, or do you also have like weekend office hours that we can always email you on the weekend? Uh. Weekends, uh, yeah, you have to email me <laughs> during daytime. You know, most of the time, uh, most of the days uh, during the weekdays, usually I, I'm around. I'm, I'm in my office, so either stop by or uh, let me show you this very quickly on Canvas. There's a link Zoom and uh, appointments, and this part actually. On Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, uh, from 11 to 12, 13, should it be? I have an online uh, office. You have to go there, book a time slot, you know, so that, you know, uh, at that time I log on to Zoom so that we can meet online. So that, and so if you need me during that time, and so we can, you don't have to, if you are far away from campus, you don't have to come there. We can meet online, right? And so, it, uh, but of course, computer questions, it will be better to see face to face. -to -face. And so a theory question, if a quick question, just a send me a, a short email, that, that's all. But if uh, too complicated, you don't have, I don't want you to write an essay to explain your question so, so that we might be easier to, you know, see online and so on and so forth. The reason why Monday, Tuesday, Thursday is because Wednesday, Friday, I have classes, uh, you know, at <laughs> the time so that. Any other questions? If not, then that's all for today. See you guys uh, next week. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Oh, chat. You interpret beta coefficient. Oh.